presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Alan Homosasa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. It's nice seeing you this early in the year. I hope it was good for everyone. It was nice here at TFNN. Let's take a look at what we have going on today. We have the ES Mini uh, down about 0.65%. We have the Russell down about 2.32% after quite a big run-up uh, in the weeks preceding uh, Christmas holiday and New Year's. NQs down about 0.89%. The Dow Futures down about 0.59. So we have gold ticking down here about 1.29%. Let me see here. We have the dollar actually on the way up. We were looking at a down target of 99. Uh, and the DXY, uh, that was going to bring some very nice buying uh, kind of energy into the markets. Well, we're seeing the dollar kind of move back up. Of course, the 10-year note, uh, the yields went up a little bit uh, today as well. We have Steel Dynamics. We'll talk about them a little bit. They're trading at 119.35. Went all the way up uh, about 120, even a little bit higher, if I remember. Let's take a look. About 128, and that was December 14th. So I, I really think that we're going to see a big year for steel. Um, obviously, you had everything going on uh, with Nippon Steel, buying U.S. Steel. Now, there seems to be a lot of demand going on. Of course, we have the, uh, what do they call it, the Inflation Reduction Act. That was passed by the Biden administration. That's going to I'm not really sure how that results in like less inflation because it's higher government spending. But I, anyways, the point is, is that a lot of steel is going to be being purchased going forward. I think the same uh, for copper as well. Let me see if uh, we have the copper contract. The futures here trading about three dollars uh, and eighty-seven cents. Take a look at Southern Copper as well. This has uh, done quite well uh, over the last uh, month, at least. Really, even earlier this year, we had a high of 88.40, just trading down a little bit uh, at about 83.80 right now, um, on less volume than we got on the movement up. Uh, I'm personally looking at copper. I think it's. Uh, I think we're going to see some good stuff moving forward with it. Disney, we're trading at 91.70. Apple, we'll talk a bit about them, uh, trading at about 184.43. Had quite a move down from 199. 62 in recent times. Tesla, of course, down 3.58%. Uh, What's going on with that? Well, Tesla did actually pretty well last quarter. However, I think there is some sentiment that EV sales won't be as good this year. I, in fact, I think that's a general sentiment for cars going into 2024. I uh, think it was a really good year uh, for new car purchases last year. Um, so we might see some kind of declining demand. Uh, Tesla has been able to really navigate what's going on um, in China. They've offered cheaper cars, and this kind of resulted in uh, more people purchasing them, which is really good. Uh, we have a lot of EV competition. Namely, in China, you have BYD. Uh, that did surpass Tesla in battery electric vehicles, and we might see that going forward. Rivian is doing very well on topping their production forecast. Excuse me, they're just production in general and the forecasts are looking good as well uh, again for me that is not the major thing with tesla is not necessarily selling these cars that's huge as it is currently but it's going to be the software uh, that they use in order to kind of achieve self-driving uh, capabilities which i think is really the big appealing thing uh, behind tesla take a look at apple they had basically declining sales, uh, some issues in China where they're not selling as much of their phones there. Um, Chinese government officials need to buy uh, Chinese-made phones. 
I think you had something like 100 billion like wiped off. Uh, it was actually pretty intense. 100 billion market cap wiped off. That's more than Ford and GM's combined. A slid lower valuation by about 107 billion. So again, this is just kind of on like lackluster, I guess performance essentially, right? I think less people are buying Apple abroad. Uh, Apple still dominates. One of the things I wanted to talk about too with Apple, and it kind of ties into what I like talking about, you know, with like IT security and stuff like that. Um, Kaspersky, which is a major cybersecurity analyst kind of firm, they were able to find actually a new vulnerability in Apple devices. Um, this was released about four days ago. It's called Triangle DB is the name, uh, at least the colloquial name they've given for the CVE. Essentially what's happening is inside the ARM CPU of the Apple phones and really all Apple devices, there was like a hidden registry that existed. And this was like unknown uh, to anyone obviously outside of Apple and probably um, unknown to people outside of the dev team. Essentially, if you knew the hash for this, you could basically get kernel level kernels, like the most basic level of the, of the operating system. You were able to just basically pull and add to memory. And what this was doing is essentially allowing people, um, you know, hackers to access all capabilities of the iPhone. So recording, uh, whether that's voice or video, um, able to send text, able to uh, essentially just do anything on that phone, which was allowing essentially other forms of uh, attacks to happen. Of course, you had Pegasus earlier this year that was developed by NSO Group. Anyways, long story short, there are some actually extremely fundamental issues um, with the ARM CPU. So this is a vulnerability that is basically built into a lot of these chips. And obviously you can go probably into like tinfoil hat area regarding this kind of stuff, but I think the biggest issue that this presents is you have a lot of major cybersecurity firms, especially like Cisco, who use Apple products because they're viewed as being uh, extremely safe. Of course, when you had the San Bernardino um, tragedy a few years back, the feds were trying to get into the phone with some kind of backdoor and Apple said they didn't have one. Um, well, this is kind of something that looks like it would be a backdoor. Uh, you need to know, you know what you're putting into this hidden registry, but once you do know uh, what it is, you can just get full access uh, to people's phones. Th this vulnerability was really instrumental. And again, what I was talking about with Pegasus and on a broader scale, what's called zero click vulnerabilities where the end user doesn't need to do anything. They just are sent some kind of payload and a whole chain of events occur and the, the phone is then compromised. Um, I don't, I, I would assume in some sense they'd be able to do something to kind of patch it, but the problem is, is that it exists on the hardware itself, right? This isn't like a software thing where you just patch it. I, I would suppose maybe they could create something that would, that would in the software, like a new iOS update that would kind of block access to that hidden registry. But regardless, it's a very uh, glaring vulnerability. This, this only came out very recently and uh, is kind of being suggested as the, the cause of a lot of breaches that Apple is having on their phones. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. Just a quick little uh, break for us there. Give me a second to pull something up. I was reading on the break uh, more with, with copper. Um, and I think is again like this might be a slow year for EV production, but copper is going to be used in in all of this manufacturing in, in a way greater amount than it had in the past. Um, but that's something for me to research. Uh, a little bit later, let's take a look here. I wanted to pull up what happened with Bitcoin. So there's a lot of talk going on with new Bitcoin ETFs about to be released. However, you just had about $400 million uh, worth of Bitcoin liquidated, um, just like today. It, it was insane. So what's going on with that, right? There's some conversation that the ETF passage, you know, that BlackRock wants to do and so on, uh, may not be accepted, right? Now, this is like where you get to this weird kind of uh, people can be like neurotic online about certain tidbits of information and news. Um, and so this this kind of spread in the crypto circles recently, and this is what a lot of analysts are attributing uh, essentially to this this massive leaving as exodus out of, of Bitcoin. Um, but we'll look at it a little more on here. Um, so the likelihood of ETFs passage became less and less likely and the market saw a stalemate, a weakness in crypto mining stocks and the sell off in several crypto related US assets also reinforced uh, market skepticism. I think that there's still so much money being added into it. And we've seen a lot of things that the SEC is trying to require of some of these major funds. Uh, I think it had to end like December 29th. Um, but a lot of these requirements that the SEC was putting out have been uh, being met. Um, we can take a look here. This is from an article from Coindesk. Let's take a look. So the Bitcoin ETF looks very likely given these bureaucratic SEC steps. And again, Coindesk is, I would say if you're, you know, more curious in the day-to-day -day kind of news on crypto instead of like the big things and kind of more theoretical things that we cover here at TFNN, uh, Coindesk is pretty decent uh, to look at. Of course, anything large, you know, we're going to talk about here uh, regardless. So there's a recent development to support that. The Securities and Exchange Commission uh, has been meeting with potential issuers of these ETFs, even during the busy holiday season, to straighten up final details, structure the creation and redemption procedure, and guide issuers to incorporate the latest changes into the revised 
S-1 filings. BlackRock just filed his Fourth Amendment to his application with the SEC on December 23rd and is expecting to see the Bitcoin ETF with 10 million in, uh, excuse me, today, uh, which is a pretty good sign at least. Obviously, I have some meme going here with that. Uh, Fox Business reported the final amendments to all spot Bitcoin ETF applications must be done by December 29th. The applications that are fully furnished and filed by, this would have been, um, you know, last Friday, uh, will be considered in the first wave. The following indicates the SEC timetable of 13 prospective issuers. You can see this here. Uh, I can link this as well uh, in the den afterwards if you're curious. The SEC has requested that issuers have their authorized participant agreement describing who will play the key role of creating and redeeming ETF shares available in the coming days. So this all looks decent, right? And these larger companies are basically kind of keeping up with what the SEC is requiring. Um, I, I think there's a potential here again for a lot of cash inflow uh, into some of these ETFs. I think Bitcoin is still kind of this very uh, strange concept to a lot of people, but what they see is that uh, it has such wild price swings and usually kind of selection bias will make people focus on the uh, positive price swings. Um, I guess, again, today, there was just some conversation that they weren't going to go through, and there's not really any vast validity to those comments, but um, the, the market in crypto uh, responds very quickly to some of this news, and it just depends on who's pushing um, certain kind of information. And, and so we're seeing a lot of that, I would say. Probably not the entire $400 because it's quite a bit on a scare. However, uh, that's what a lot of analysts are kind of um, attributing that to which is pretty insane. Take a look in some other just basic news. Take a look at Amazon. Um, if I can pull up the shares here, just down a little bit. However, there is some uh, positive look regarding their ad revenue. Uh, so uh, this year, it's anticipated that Amazon video ad push is gonna generate about 5 billion in revenue, which is pretty uh, solid. Ads on Amazon streaming service will start appearing in North America on January 29th and internationally on February 5th to receive ad-free content, you gotta pay basically an extra $3 a month. Amazon will sell about 3 billion in video ads this year and generate an additional 1.8 billion from Prime subscribers who pay the extra fee to avoid commercials. Uh, the estimate assumes 70% of Prime subscribers will opt out to watch ads rather than pay the fee. I'll say too, I think this, that's not actually a bad analysis. We're, we're seeing um, a lot of people actually draw out of their subscriptions to stuff like Netflix, like Disney Plus, all these kind of things. And um, it's just, they're raising rates uh, too much, right, on the, on the monthly. And that's where you're starting to see some of these kind of like more interesting dynamics of bundling certain videos and, and adding uh, small ads every now and then to kind of offset the cost. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, Amazon's advertising business mostly search and display ads on its web store generated about 12.1 billion in the quarter ended uh, September 30, uh, excuse me, 30th, about 8.5% of total revenue. Uh, the Seattle-based company sees Prime Video as an ideal spot to boost ad sales and profit from the billions it has spent on content, including movies, NFL games, and uh, so on. So keeping a look at that, I think that's obviously massive for them. Um, and I do kind of agree that I don't know, obviously, if 70% is the number, um, <clears throat> but I think a lot of people kind of just take this. Uh, I know I'm not going to spend uh, an extra $3 a month on that at all. Give me one second. I'm trying to find. This was the article here that I was talking about with canceling their streaming services. And again, we were seeing that issue earlier, uh, especially with Disney, right? Like earlier last year. Excuse me earlier at the end of last year. Um, this is more anecdotal with this one individual, but the point is, is that you're seeing an increase essentially in customer cancellation. Okay, about one quarter of your subscribers to major streaming services, a group that includes Apple TV+, Discovery+, Disney+, Hulu, Max, Netflix, etc., have canceled at least three of them over the past two years. Uh, according to November data from subscription analytics provider Antenna, two years ago, the number stood at 15%, a sign that streaming users are becoming increasingly fickle. I'll say, too, that I don't, I, I, this was the initial 
draw a lot of these streaming services with that it was that they were ad free okay they were ad free and you could select what you wanted to watch at any time right you didn't have to wait for the time slot to come on or anything like that um, however you're starting to see some new platforms coming around uh, where it demonstrates that a lot of viewers are okay with essentially watching advertisements right as long as the content is essentially unique enough right me one second here the number one thing that I, I really think of that comes to mind is uh, the platform Tubi okay Tubi just has a lot of really strange films from like the 80s uh, I mean even going back to like the early 1900s but they also have some newer ones as well that just don't get all of the big cultural hype um, you know these aren't again big famous movies uh, you have to watch advertisements that are kind of long but this streaming service is gaining uh, a lot of uh, basically users every day. And so I think there is a level of tolerance for a lot of these users. It, more is probably gonna be about being able to select what you want. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, basically mortgage demand, a little bit about what might be happening uh, with rates by the end of the year. We're going to take a look here first at Toll Brothers. Should we get $99? Um, we saw on news that that rates were coming down right about December 18th. Uh, just such a high movement. I mean, even really in the beginning of October, excuse me, beginning of November, so we got 70 all the way up to a high of 105.91. We're seeing this pull back a little bit and might've been seen a little bit as overbought 
Um, of course, the market loves pricing in any kind of change, no matter how far out in the future that it may be. Let's take a look here. We have the mortgage demand was actually down 9.4% for the final week of 2023, despite recent drops in interest rates. The mortgage demand ended 2023 on a sour note, despite a sharp drop in mortgage interest rates during December. Total application volume was down 9.4% for the week ending in December 29th, compared with two weeks earlier. Uh, the MBA was closed last week, and the results include adjustments for the holidays. The average rate on the 30-year fixed ended the year at 6.76%, lower than when it was two weeks ago, but higher than it was just a week ago. That, however, is still well below the 8% high seen in mid-October. Markets continue to digest the impact of slowing inflation and potential rate cuts from the Federal Reserve, uh, helping mortgage rates stay at levels close to the lowest since mid-2023. Uh, the recent decline in rates has given the housing market some cause for optimism going into 2024, but purchase applications have not yet picked up in response. Applications to refinance a home loan ended the year 15% higher than the same period a year ago, and that makes, that makes sense as well. Uh, the applications for a mortgage to purchase the home ended the year 12% lower. Home buyers are still contending with very little supply and very high rising home prices. And I think this is really what it is. Obviously, you had a lot of people buying, which is, you know, before prices really took off, which is why you had this higher uh, refinancing uh, kind of percentage at the end of the year. Um, again, prices are still uh, somewhat high. You know, Tom's way more qualified than me to speak on that. Um, but at least like in you know general consumer goods, you're still seeing a uh, stickiness of prices, even with uh, slowing inflation and obviously lowered rates with that. But let's talk a little bit about what the Fed is uh, at least speaking on regarding rates. They're saying the Fed officials in December saw rate cuts likely, but the path is highly uncertain. Ooh. Federal Reserve officials in December concluded that interest rate cuts are likely in 2024, though they appear to provide little in the way of when that might occur. And that was according to the minutes that were released today. Uh, at the meeting, the rate-setting Federal Open Market Committee agreed to hold its benchmark rate steady in a range between 5.25% and 5.5%. Uh, members indicated that they expect three-quarter percentage point cuts uh, by the end of 2024. However, the meeting summary noted a high level of uncertainty over how or if that will happen, which is not the solid news everyone was buying on. Tell me the news lied to me. In discussing the policy outlook, participants viewed the policy rate as likely at or near its peak for this tightening cycle. Uh, though they noted that the actual policy path will depend on how the economy evolves, official noted the progress that has been made in the battle to bring down inflation. They said supply chain factors that contributed substantially to a surge that peaked in mid-2022 to, excuse me, uh, in mid-2022 have eased. And we see this also as well. You're having these kind of short-term uh, issues with shipping as well. I mean, most notably, um, I think in the Red Sea, just recently Maersk is back um, kind of pushing stuff through there. What happens when, you know, the world basically enters into all these kind of strange and, and distant conflicts is, is you really do get a big labor uh, on the supply chain. This obviously increases costs. I mean, I, I think with what happened with closing some shipments through the Red Sea, I, there was like a, it was like a drone attack on, on some Liberian ship. Uh, anyways, the point was is to, to move through here, a lot of these freighters were charging up to 12% more, uh, right? And that obviously has a big impact down the supply chain. Um, that's not great when you're kind of trying to deal with a global inflation issue that's occurring. Uh, the dot plot of individual members' expectations released following the meeting showed that members expect cuts over the coming three years to bring the overnight borrowing rate back down uh, near the long run range of 2%. So over 3%, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of like a slower... I think pace and a lot of people might have been thinking, but we'll see what happens. And three years is a lot of time uh, for things to go wrong and a lot of times for supply chains to get bundled up again. Um, but we're hoping uh, that doesn't kind of go that way, right? Let's take a look here, talk about Cigna a little bit, just in some more news. The Cigna group, wow, what a big move here. And then you're trading about 305.62 
uh, from a low of about 254. Uh, they're in exclusive talks to sell its Medicare Advantage business to Healthcare Services Corporation in a deal that could value the unit between $3 billion and $4 billion. Uh, health insurer HCSC, which is from Blue uh, Cross Blue Shield, said it does not comment on rumor and speculation. Of course, shares of Cigna fell about 2% on the news, and the company did not immediately respond to a request. The deal is expected to be announced in the coming days. Uh, a sale could mark the change in Cigna's strategy for Medicare Advantage segment, uh, through which it manages government health insurance for people over 65 and older. And that's a lot to kind of get rid of, and I'd be curious of kind of what their logic is behind doing that, um, because it's such a cash cow, right? Uh, Reuters has reported in November that the company was exploring a sale of the business, uh, Cigna, which got into medical advantage business with about a $3.8 billion acquisition, excuse me, acquisition in 2011, would be backing away at a time the U.S. government is tightening its purse strings, and it cut the reimbursement rate for health insurance in early 2023. A vast majority of the revenue comes from the commercial business and pharmacy benefits division. Um, so, you know, this kind of segment, I think, is only about like 5% of its total revenue. So not a uh, major big deal, but regardless, uh, it's interesting to see them moving through that. Because I, I would assume uh, that's pretty straightforward to, to make money, especially when you're dealing with such a, like a government program like this. Um, anyways, talk a little bit more about, um, I, I think I was just on a kick this weekend. I was uh, on New Year's. I was hanging out with some people, uh, and some of them are in like IT and security. Um, but we spoke about this a little bit, and uh, it was from 23andMe. There was actually a major breach in this. And I like, you know, I'm not really like a big conspiracy guy or anything like this, but I just didn't like the idea of like giving my data to people like this. Um, well, my sister did it anyways, so I guess my mitochondrial DNA is on the web. But there was a major breach, right? 23 of me tells victims it's their fault that the data was breached, okay? And I'll take you through this a little bit, and it's absolutely insane. And just more examples of what I try to tell everyone here is like these companies don't, if they can get away with losing all this data, right, they're, they're going to. And now, of course, it's not good for them, and it's, it's bad on the face and stuff like that, 100%. And there are consequences. But just to kind of show how like much they actually didn't really do anything and how glaringly bad in, in a real way, and again, we'll talk about this. We're about to go to break, so I don't want to get too much into it. But essentially what happened is they're blaming customers for not changing their passwords. And there's plenty of ways that a large company that's dealing in uh, genetic data uh, to kind of force people to do that in a different way or at least lock down accounts that haven't changed. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit about this uh, when we return. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. 
Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, <laughs> welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoop with TFNN.com. Again, the more I'm just reading this article on the break, the more I'm like just laughing at it. And really, it's just such a good, it's not just so rude, I think. So essentially what happened is people broke in, right? 14,000 user accounts uh were accessed essentially right now what you're supposed to do is you know properly you know kind of sequester different bits of data right you can't lump it all together in one big hold because when the walls get breached well then all your stuff uh is essentially gone they were brute forcing accounts with passwords that were known okay so essentially there's something called credential stuffing if you use password one two three on all of your devices right let's say you have accounts A, B, and C, different websites, you know, I figure out, you use password one, two, three, I'm gonna try B and C to see if that's the same password. That's called credential stuffing, okay? And it's actually a thing a lot of people do, and um, it's honestly not the wisest, right? Uh, anyways, there's enough people to where it doesn't seem like it's an immediate threat to a lot of people, but that's also not a security policy. Anyways, people were brute force, about 14,000 accounts. Now, the issue, that resulted from this is that on 23andMe, this is what it's saying here, you have a feature called, I guess, DNA relatives, okay? And this matches you with people around the world or just users around the world who um, supposedly are related to you, right? Based on these kind of studies. That right there is essentially having kind of front-facing data. So with those 14,000 initial victims, you know, they were able to get the information of 6.9 million customers uh, who were not directly hacked at all. Uh, now, of course, it wouldn't have been the full profile, I would assume, uh, since there must be some things that are private on 23andMe, um, but that's such like an insane uh, kind of issue, right? And I, I would reckon there should have been something where you reach out to the person that you're supposedly related with and uh, you know they hit accept and uh, that information is transferred that way. But just to have it bare facing like that is pretty insane. So anyways, um, lawsuits came out being like, hey, you know, uh, what the heck, man? And they said, it's basically your guys' fault because you didn't change your passwords and you use the same password everything. And again, this is the length that some of these companies will go uh, to kind of push, push any kind of responsibility off them. It's not really on Okay, it is on the user to be like intelligent with their security and stuff like that, but you can't blame them if nobody's ever taught them these kind of things, right? And there's been no concerted effort by 23andMe to teach people these kind of things either. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that develops out. Again, I really do think going forward, we're gonna see some, maybe some more insurance companies that kind of uh, handle this issue, um, or we're just gonna keep seeing uh, more major breaches. Take a look a little bit, moving on to gold. Again, we have the gold contract trading down a little bit. Um, give me one second to pull up the ticker. 
I want to talk a bit about Barrick Gold because they have, uh, they're potentially, oh yeah, of course, it's gold. Uh, I look at the gold report like every Monday and you would think that I would remember the ticker for that. Uh, anyways, there's some conversation uh, that Barrett Gold might be purchasing essentially Quantum Holders. Okay, Quantum Holders was doing uh, copper production. Their flagship mine uh, completely imploded and it really messed up Quantum Holders entirely. They had a massive share collapse. Uh, I would say, yeah, it's not a good amount. Say about like even 30% or something like that, more than that. Oh no, even way more than that. Anyways. Um, Barrick chief executive officer approached uh, some of the first Quantum's largest investors late last year, according to people familiar with the situation, uh, who asked not to be identified as they're talking private. Gold giant Barrick has been seeking to expand in copper, and I think we're going to see this a lot with other gold mining companies as well. Uh, and a deal with First Quantum would transform the company into the world's biggest uh, producer. Okay, the smaller Canadian miner has been left vulnerable after Panama ordered the closure of its biggest, most profitable asset, uh, creating a potential opportunity. Um, for their purchase, essentially. And again, look at these gold companies. If you're one, I'll say, if you, you're not subscribed yet, you've got to get the gold report. Tom O'Brien released every Monday morning. Okay, it is pretty in-depth. There is a bunch of equities, um, not only in the current portfolio, but that are being looked at now. There's analysis on all of them. It's, it's really solid uh, if, you, if you're in a trading metals like this. There are some copper in it as well. Um, but look for these gold companies uh, that are going to be getting into copper. And I'm probably going to be harping on the copper thing uh, for the year to come. And next time I'm on, I'll definitely have a little better of a presentation as long as it's not like tomorrow or something. Uh, but anyways, I'm looking at Barrett Gold for that reason. We're down a little bit, but that always happens when there's conversation of a company uh, buying out another company as well. Move a little bit into uh, biotech. Dan in the Den, if you're listening, check this out. Maybe you can uh, look at it and see if you like it. This is from a company uh, called Roche. Okay, Roche Pharma Research and Early Development. One of the big issues that is going to hit us in the 21st century is going to be these issues of superbugs, um, which are going to be bugs that are resistant uh, to antibiotics. Um, it's a massive issue. We really overuse a lot of antibiotics. Uh, we give them to people. They don't finish. Um, they, they don't finish their courses. So these uh, kind of pathogens grow stronger in the body. Uh, also, when it's excreted, that goes into the environment as well. And this uh, can make bacteria that would, you know, usually not be a big deal for us, uh, make it into a big deal, since there'll be no treatment for it, right? So in a lot of conversations, what the Eastern Bloc has done, we split off in the 1950s, um, or a little bit earlier, with discovering things like penicillin, uh, where they were using something called bacteriophages, uh, which was essentially a, a, an edited virus that attacks a certain bacteria. The Eastern Bloc has been using that um, since that branch off uh, to quite a lot of success, actually. So there's been some discussion that that's what the West was going to kind of pivot to, and it would be nice because we don't have uh, we don't have a lot of bugs, obviously, that are resistant to kind of viruses. However, there's been some editing going on uh, in some of these new antibiotics, which are pretty interesting. We can talk through this a little bit. You can take a look at Roche uh, as well, if you would like to. Uh, the ticker for Roche, we'll take a look, is ROG. Um, anyways, going forward here, potential drug offers rare promise in the fight against antibiotic-resistant superbugs after it successfully targeted a bacterium that causes life-threatening infections in hospital patients. Uh, these superbugs have emerged as a leading health threat as antibiotics and other treatments become ineffective through excessive or careless use. While the drug being developed by Swiss pharmaceutical group Roche has been tested on only one type of bacteria, the way it works suggests that it could be effective against other microbes and encourage much-needed research investment in the field, Essentially, this is a quote. Uh, we discovered a new way of killing bacteria. You could imagine tweaking the chemistry to address other targets. It's conducting its phase one clinical trials in humans on the candidate drug, uh, which targets bacterium known as crab. Uh, the pathogen, which causes conditions such as sepsis and pneumonia, thrives in hospitals due to ease of transmission among patients weakened by other illnesses. Uh, it weakens the membrane. Essentially, it uh, creates a peptide and that peptide weakens the membrane. And this is brilliant. I mean, really, if this works, um, 
that drug will be purchased. I mean, without a doubt, because this is a major fear that a lot of people are running into. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. I don't know what the heck the stock name is. Take a look, basically. Um, an ASML on the break here. Give me one second. Hmm. I'm gonna pull it up. Regardless, uh, ASML is down a little bit. What's happening is the semiconductor kind of war is continuing to go on. They're being blocked from shipping uh, some of their chip making tool to China, as the headline says. Um, ASML, which makes machines that are critical to manufacturing most advanced semiconductors, uh, it was barred by the Dutch government from exporting some of its tools to China. In a statement released on Monday, ASML uh, said a license for the shipment of its NXT 2050i and NXT 2100i lithography systems has been recently uh, partially revoked. Excuse me, recently been partially revoked. This is going to cut it down a little bit. They make the ultraviolet lithography machines, which are really important in uh, producing these wafers. Um, Again, I think we're going to see more of this. ASML still is in an okay spot. Um, however, if you're going to get more American entries to uh, the market in lithography, which I think you're going to see like um, IMB do, uh, this could be um, 
excuse me, IBM, uh, this could be an issue for ASML in the long term. And then we look like more so as well into NVIDIA, right? And some people have been concerned with some of this blocking. What, what they had been doing is essentially skirting some of these regulations against trading things into China. Um, that got the kibosh put on it about a month ago. And so what they're doing is they're essentially sending weaker versions, at least of the gaming processor, over to China, uh, which I think, you know, will help kind of pad uh, some of the loss. So the product page on NVIDIA's website for Chinese consumers shows that the new NVIDIA RTX 490D has 11% fewer processing cores than versions sold outside of China. Uh, RTX and NVIDIA's line of advanced gaming GPUs, uh, the company's CUDA architecture is essentially a GPU equivalent for CPU cores, which are processing units. So again, this won't hit them as badly as it could have, but um, you know, I think going forward, there's a question to be asked, like what if such large portions of the global market is cut off, if there's some kind of political issue. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be with you tomorrow, but we'll see. Uh, it's been wonderful, happy new year, and have a great rest of your day.